Well, in an upcoming panel discussion, we shall explore the impact of these innovations on the credit processes. Overall, customer journey, their satisfaction, highlighting the best practices, emerging technology, and of course, the real world challenges. Well, let's get going without further wait. Let's discuss digital customer onboarding and KYC, transforming the credit experience. Before we move ahead to the panel discussion, I will myself like to thank all the panelists for coming on board, taking time out of their busy schedule. Industry experts and leaders have joined us today. Out of the very busy schedule, they are going to share some very, very informative insights. Well, let's get going on that note. So I'll call one by one our panelists for this absolutely productive panel discussion happening here. I'd like to call upon and request Neha Kabra, Head AML Industry Speaker, to please join us on stage. Can we have a huge round of applause, everyone? Also, I'll request you calling to the screen, so I'll request you to be seated. Thank you so much for joining us. Absolutely looking for such an amazing session out here. Along with that, I'll call upon Deepak Malik, Group Executive Vice President, Yes Bank. Can we have a huge round of applause for this morning? Along with Mazin Abdullah, Head of Co-Lending and Fundraise, Brent. Can we have a huge round of applause for him? Well, we are very delighted our industry experts have joined us and of course, lastly, I would like to request our moderator who is the captain of this ship to guide us further, Gunshal Bright Mansal, CGM and CSMO India Post Payments Bank to join us. Can we have a huge round of applause, everyone? Well, uh, fabulous and I think Mr. Mansal, let's get going and I think this is also an opening and inaugural session, I would say. Looking forward for more insight, industry experts are here. Let us hear from there how this era of technology is taking and diving deep into customer orientation. Thank you so much. Over to you, sir. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Sinex, for this opportunity to interact and, uh, you know, be on this panel and discuss the various aspects of uh, the uh, digital customer onboarding and KYC transforming uh, the credit experience. Uh, just to give you a little background, uh, the credit industry is undergoing a real transformation. Uh, if you look at it, uh, not only the customer onboarding in terms of the bank accounts, you know, I, for example, uh, from my experience as uh, Chief General Manager and CSMO India Post Payments Bank. Uh, I must uh, you know, share with you that uh, today we have reduced the customer onboarding journey after doing the KYC on a savings account, current account, uh, from a few days, few hours to less than two to three minutes. You know, today we have onboarded nine crore customers across India in the farthest corners of India. And in these nine crore customers, we don't have any single paper at all. The cost of onboarding a customer on a savings account, you know, on, uh, based on the paper-based uh, account opening forms and this and that, uh, has come down from uh, almost 600 rupees to just about three rupees. Just about three rupees. So you can imagine the kind of uh, you know, speed, convenience, uh, the, uh, the economies of scale uh, that we have uh, looked at. Similarly, on the uh, customer onboarding KYC experience for the uh, credit, you know, typically we uh, or the government is looking at transforming this process and uh, digital onboarding, digital credit decision making. And uh, if you look at it, uh, the idea is to gradually shift the uh, unorganized credit lending, unorganized lending to organized sector. So currently if you look at it, uh, the size of uh, the organized retail lending annually is about 30 lakh crores and uh, just about 30 percent of that is organized lending. So rest of it is almost uh, you know, unorganized lending. So uh, coming to that you know, and coming back to the panelists and uh, you know, discussing the various uh, agenda items and the questions. So first, I would like to uh, ask uh, Mazin uh, Abdullah. 
uh, how digital KYC is helping to onboard customers faster with automated KYC parameter verifications, credit checks, geolocation mapping, eligibility checks, and various other parameters digitally to speed up the KYC onboarding. Hi, thanks. Am I audible? Hi, thanks, Kushal. I think uh, as far as KYC is concerned, it's an interesting thing. Uh, it says, uh, and what it means is, know your customer. Uh, I think what has happened in the last few years, KYC has become KYT, so which is know your documents, right? So as long as I have your PAN and as long as I have your Aadhaar, uh, I, I know you, and that's how the amount booking was getting done, right? I think let's just go. Let's go back uh, maybe a couple of decades back, right? I think what used to happen is you used to go to a bank, you used to meet the bank manager, the bank manager uh, used to know, also know the person who is introducing you to the bank, maybe your parent, parents or your friends or your colleagues or your neighbor, etc. Right? So the bank will know who you are, yeah? who introduced you, where do you live, what do you do, what work you do, where do you stay, where you are originally from. Right? So in that sense, the bank truly knew who the customer is. Right? The bank knew the customer right? and that's why it was called uh, and even globally, right? Know your customer, right? And then we move to a new sort of a uh, thing where you know it became all about, uh, as I said, KYD, right? Which is to know the documents, right? I have these two documents, and I'll uh, and, and I'll open the account and I'll start the credit relationship, etc. Right? And and, uh, and having just the documents obviously came with it uh, a lot of risk, right? Because you have very very limited information about the customer. Probably having a pan and other the only thing it proves is that uh, perhaps you're trending, right? I think uh, other than that. It, uh, it has relatively lesser significance. And what digital has done, it, right? And today there are platforms who are deeply engaging with the customer, is now truly you can open and know the customer, right? So, for example, let's say uh, you are opening a bank account through Swiggy, right? Swiggy is not doing that right now, but this is just to give an example, right? So, Swiggy knows where do you sit, or let's say Ola or an Uber, right? Let's say an account, a credit account or a deposit account is getting opened through a Swiggy or a Uber or a uh, blanket, right? So these platforms know where you live, right? They know where, where, where are the orders that you are delivering, how many orders in a day. If it's an Ola and Uber, they also know, okay, you live here and from this place you go to this place, right? probably this is your office, this is where you go out, this is how frequently you go out, right? So I think, uh, or let's say you are a new banking platform, right? So a new banking platform typically will have all your uh, banking information, your mutual fund information, all your deposits, uh, your credit information, etc. Right? So I think the ability of a digital platform to truly know and truly understand the customer has improved significantly, right? And I think that is the biggest takeaway in my opinion, and not just let's say doing uh, the customary minimum checks and moving ahead with customer onboarding. Right? So I think that is one uh, one very very critical thing, right? Truly understanding the customer. I think as far as digital KYC is concerned uh, today. Uh, as per RBI circular, there are three ways in which you can do digital KYC. One is your eKYC, uh, where all you do is eKYC. Obviously, the eKYC process comes with a lot of constraints. Uh, one is you can only have a one lakh or a two lakh limit on deposit or a credit account. You have to do eKYC in one year. So I think when it came in 2016, it looked very interesting. Uh, however, it has not taken off for the reason that I mentioned. There are constraints, and then you have to do eKYC again in one year. I think second is the non-face-to-face -face KYC. Uh, where you uh, do, you collect your OVDs through uh, CKYC or offline KYC, DigiLogger, etc. You do PAN account, PAN verification, bank account verification, etc. I think in the post COVID world, when suddenly, uh, obviously, you know, the mobility was significantly impacted, it was a non face to face KYC which uh, started becoming very, very popular. Uh, I think a lot of fintechs, uh, tech, uh, fintechs, and you know, new banks, and even uh, traditional banks doing digital lending and started doing uh, non face to face KYC. I think last year RBI came up with the uh, positive address confirmation requirement uh, wherein you had to uh, verify the customer's address either through delivery, etc. And I think that is where the challenges came. Uh, I think uh, from what I understand from the industry, there's a nudge to move away from that uh, KYC mode, though that is, uh, I would call the most sexy way of doing KYC, it gets done very fast. But I think because of positive address confirmation ka issues, I think it is getting slightly uh, lesser popular. I think the future of digital KYC will be video KYC. Uh, I think the regulator is much, much more comfortable with it. The chances of fraud, etc., are significantly lower because there is the customer sitting in front of you. You're talking to the customer, you're asking you random questions so that you're more confident it's not an AI 
uh, bond, etc. sitting on the other side. So I think the future of digital KYC uh, is a video KYC. I think both uh, for all RPA regulated entities as well as for SEBI regulated entities. I think uh, there's a scope to improve the video KYC processes uh, to make it more digitized. Uh, I think one of the key problems today is that you, know, you have to show your physical pan and I think if I were to ask here, uh, I'll just request how many of you are actually carrying a physical pan with you, right? Uh, if you can just raise your hands, right? So I think maybe 7 or 8 out of uh, maybe 30 or 40 percent. So I think just 10 percent of people are carrying physical pan and I think that's one challenge with the video KYC process. Uh, when you have to show your uh, pan, right, uh, in the video KYC process, so when only 10 or 20 percent of people carry it, so obviously the, the KYC cannot be done then and there, right? The customer may drop off or there will be delays, etc. Right? So I think there are, there are some ways, uh, I think there are scope to improve the video KYC process, but I believe as far as doing digital KYC is concerned, uh, that is the future. And, uh, and I think as we move ahead in the digital journey, I think uh, one of the biggest pain point, uh, let's say in the past was doing the OSC. Uh, what used to happen is, and people who have done, uh, done banking would know that, a lot of times you receive the Xerox copy of the OVDs, but the consumer may not have the actual uh, original document, right? So, so at head office you don't know, or as a compliance head or a, as an AML head, you don't know whether the actual OSC was done or not, right? OSC was obviously written, right? So I think now when you are getting documents from DigiLocker or UIDI or Sursai, you are much more confident that the document is actually coming from source, right? So this is the actual document. You are using uh, advanced analytics, AI, ML, etc. to check whether the consumer who is sitting in front of you in a video call or in a selfie is actually the customer of the document. You are able to match the uh, photographs, etc. with the documents much better, right? right. So I think that is where uh, it has gotten uh, much better and able to reduce the KYC time uh, from a few hours and days to minutes and seconds now. That's wonderful, uh, Mameen. In fact, uh, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Jandhan Aadhaar Mobile, the Jam Trinity has made life easier, you know, because behind the KYC or the Aadhaar, if the Aadhaar is verified through a uh, uh, you know the uh, the biometric. Uh, then probably uh, you know this is almost a verification that you know the person is genuine and the right person or right Ramesh Kumar is actually uh, doing the transaction with you. And uh, OTP uh, coming on the mobile link with Aadhaar is another thing which uh, you know RBI is adding gradually. And uh, for all the accounts that we are now opening, the OTP has to compulsorily go to the mobile number linked to the other. So this has made life even more easier and actually it is better uh, in terms of uh, risk management. So uh, it is basically a game, uh, you know, if you uh, if you look at it, if you ask me, it's a cat and, a cat and mouse, uh, uh, you know, uh, story uh, between risk and actually speed. So digitization and risk. Uh, are both running one after the other and I, I see as an industry player I see a lot of new directions, new KYC, new uh, risk management, uh, you know, uh, regulations which are coming in uh, just to mitigate the risk and also take care of some of the observations or some of the things that we observe in the market. So now coming to our second speaker Deepak. So uh, we've heard a lot uh, of things uh, spoken by Mazin and uh, so uh, basically, uh, as you all, um, you know, as he has also mentioned that earlier, people used to carry loads of papers, you know, uh, photocopies of uh, the statements, uh, bank statements, and Aadhaar, uh, and uh, PAN card, and this and that. And sometimes, as he mentioned, that OSP, he did not the bank manager. Ko. Actually, never, he would just write it because the customer ko janta hai ya he has heard about the customer and uh, still he writes. Uh, and, uh, so now, uh, how does uh, the digitization process, you know, how do you think that has really reduced the speed, time and the efforts of the, of the customer as well as the bank? Uh, thanks for asking the question. Uh, all of us are aware like digitization, it has come a long way in the last couple of years. Uh, we all face COVID together. We know prior to that and after that, uh, the kind of digitization which has happened. So if we remember uh, the way people used to take loans a couple of years back, right? And when they even now in some tier 3, tier 4 cities, how it would typically happen is that as a customer, you will walk in to a branch, try to meet who is the loan officer. 
get some value of loan application, try to fill it up, you won't understand a couple of things, so many jargons could be written. Some information may not be available to you, right, because you'll be asking where was the account open, what is the account number, what is the limit, what is the balance now, right, what is the EMI amount, what is the rate of payment, and so on and so on, right. So once you have, let's say, filled in the application, then you have the documents which you need to submit, as my fellow colleagues mentioned, that one uh, copy of uh, KYC document, then someone has to do OE, that is original C, verify. Then it comes to bank statement, right? Then it comes to any other income document like self receipt or other financial statements. So if you're lucky, uh, maybe like your application would be taken by the loan officer, then he'll uh, say, yes, I'll do it. So we can meet after two or three days. Once uh, he appraises your case, maybe like he wants to visit, the borrower at his place if the loan amount is beyond a specific threshold, will visit him. So another day goes by, then we we'll like you are lucky that you'll get your sanction letter within five days, right? So once the sanction letter is received, now you have to sign no documents again. You will happen to uh, maybe like leave your place of business or your job. You have to walk into the branch, sign the loan documents, and finally you uh, take your loan. So it's around seven days of journey if you don't face any kind of bottlenecks. So this is what we are talking about without any digitalization, right? Now look at the power of digitalization. You don't visit the branch. You, from the comfort of your homes, from your mobile itself, you are able to apply for the loan, one, right? Okay. So you don't need any physical, long application, print out, nothing to be filled in with your own handwriting or nothing to be signed. KYC document, much easier. As uh, my fellow me asked, Ajit, like, how many of you are carrying your, let's say, physical uh, bank card? So you don't need, you just need to match your bank card, banks are able to validate that. And also, so we don't need any physical bank card from your side. And the best part which has happened, that is a single identity across, across India, around 130 crores people now carry that unique identity, right? So that helps all of us alike, right? So what I happen to see is whatsoever BI reports, whatsoever newspaper reports, whatsoever RBI annual audit reports, everything mentions, almost every digital account is related with your individual identity, that is your other card. Once you do it, now banks are able to fetch all the information which they need for credit decisioning instantly, right? So just one, two, three, that is simple, pan, other, mobile, done, right? Everything else they are able to fetch they are able to validate everything. They know this customer is credit worthy, not credit worthy. They are able to offer you the uh, loan which you ask for within a few minutes, right? The journey which used to take number of days, now it taking few minutes. And some of the existing uh, bank customers, they must have enjoyed that some sort of, uh, let's say, uh, offers which almost every banks and BFCs they are offering that is loan in seconds. Right, you simply log in into your uh, internet banking and you'll be able to see an offer for you or otherwise some sort of marketing message from the respective bank that here is your 9 lakh rupees credit awaiting uh, uh, to be deposited in your account within a few minutes. Right, so this is how the journey has transformed, right, from a complex to simple, from a very late, lengthy journey to a very short journey taking a lot of effort to now almost negligible efforts. So this is one part of, or let's say, customer journey which is improvised. Now you go to the second step. The physical journeys uh, while they were happening, the data was there in, across different branches of the bank or the company, <coughs> sorry, or the institution, right? So that data was already lying in different pockets, right? Different people have different perspectives about different customers, but you are not able to analyze anything, right? Now, because everything is coming digitally, you are able to analyze this data very, very well. You can define your customer segments. You can define what these customers need from you. You can personalize these offers, right? And as per the one of the uh, research report, which I just happened to see, the newer generation customers, right? Uh, Gen Gs or millennials, which we could call as who are highly earning people, right? They say. 57% of these people, they are likely to leave their current banker if they get some kind of personalized offers, right? So this is the power of this data analytics which is now sitting with all the banks, 
right now last but not the least the compliance or the regulatory burden while you enter into digitalization is very easy right but if you see digital lending guidelines given by reserve bank of india it puts a lot of onus on all the lenders to comply with various requirements because finally you are playing with the customers right you are working with customers you have all their private uh, data with you right so data encryptions right and if a customer has somehow done something mistakenly then there is some kind of free cancellation of loans and other things so everything becomes possible when you have everything digital right so overall i believe digitalization has made lives easier but it has other aspect also uh, because when we see the number of frauds right they too are increasing so here i think rest my conversation so thank you uh, deepak a uh, very uh, informative uh, uh, you know discussion that you've done uh, now i mean to the you know even the higher aspect of digital lending which is the use of ai uh, and uh, machine learning rpa tools etc and uh, this basically you know setting up algorithm generative machine learning so all this you know over the last two years you know this is the new buzzword and uh, generative uh, ai itself you know is uh, creating ripples across uh, in various industries i would say and more so in the lending uh, sector as well so uh, would like to neha to now come back to us and tell us about what is happening and how we uh, kyc and the entire processes uh, can be improved using ai ml thanks a lot sir uh, but for uh, answering what minister rai has spoken about or asked a question i would get go to the previous question which has been answered by mr uh, mr malik as said why are we here i mean what is the purpose of we being here anyone okay uh let me answer that so we are here for understanding why digitization right what digitization can help us and how it can help uh if if we just look back we are so much into the earlier era of documentation here i would like to yet give my example only i am so much comfortable with the paper and pen in my hand can you see my right? face so every time i walk around i need to have at least pen in my hand that's make me little more comfortable documentation and all and i think mr manish example he is carrying his mobile <laughs> so that's that's the purpose of we being here right okay now coming back to the question mr rai uh, of mr rai uh before answering the question i would like to give a disclaimer over here that whatever is the question whatever is the answer or whatever discussion rather that we are having over here is in our individual capacity and that has nothing to do with what b or i as such is uh, uh, my bank or my institution as it is following right okay uh, now coming back to the question uh, how many of us has actually visited physical branch of the bank probably in last 6 months or one year time okay three of us Okay, out of a population of somewhere around 50 in this room, three. So that comes to even less than 10 percent, or rather near around to five percent, right? Okay. Uh, so guys, one simple question that comes to my mind is: if we ourselves as a user don't really want to go to branch to perform the the perform the traditional way of uh, account opening kyc refresh or loan for that matter which my colleague have just now spoken about then why do we expect kyc guy as a back office poor guy to be sitting behind the screen and doing the kyc documentation it's an unrealistic task right and that is where ki uh, ai and machine learning comes into picture what is kyc it's about verifying the documentation it's about establishing the um, identity of the person is establishing the identity of the uh, and establishing the address of that person that also i mean that is a 
uh, orthodox way of doing the KYC, uh, which is what is our regulation also says. So I mean, I'm not saying that this is uh, uh, something un, uh, unwanted or something like this, but this is something which our regulation specifies. But there is a way beyond it. If you guys, uh, I mean, I'm sure you guys would have really, uh, that, uh, I mean, have come from the same background. UPI, IPS, fraud, CFR, fraud, how, I mean, uh, day on day, it's just increasing. With the AI and ML, machine learning techniques, we are able to identify much more of it. Like Mr. Nazim uh, has said, right, uh, Swiggy now knows who my customers are, what is their daily pattern of living, how many times that they go to, for example, uh, Kolaba for having their lunch and all, how many times I go out for my visit, client visit or something. Why can't we use the same information for identifying our customers? It's just about establishing some rules in the system. And AI will do even much more better than that. Right now, what are the what is the major challenge in KYC if I have to say that we are facing? Major challenge the bank is facing or the institution as such is facing. Anybody? Okay, um, so major hurdle that we are facing these days is that customer give, may give a false identification, may open up multiple accounts with multiple OBDs, who checks that? I mean, in an organization, if I as of now today give my voter ID, open an account, I can open an account. And then I can go to some other institution and open uh, account with probably Aadhaar, I can open because these are rather why I am talking about different organization. I mean within the same organization, I can of course go to different organization and open as many accounts as I want but within the same organization I can go, right? But that is where this AI and machine learning and RBA comes into picture, right? So, I mean, nothing that stops banks, financial institutions to adopt these machine learnings, to have the processes being developed, have the linkages being uh, set up with UIDI, NSDL, SARSAI portals to understand and verify the authenticity of the documents that have been given, and even to that extent the driving licenses and the passports to that some extent can also be validated. And that suffices for our uh, KYC process, and that's how we have to live about it. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Neha. Uh, in fact, uh, if we uh, if we read the news uh, uh, just about a few days back, uh, in the Infosys, which uh, which has got a team strength or employee strength of about three three and a half lakh employees, uh, in over the last two years, they have trained almost two lakh people on AI. In, uh, Techniques. So uh, this is the kind of seriousness, uh, you know, you uh, see that in terms of the AI, uh, all the IT companies, the tech companies, they are, uh, you know, uh, looking at uh, AI, uh, you know, uh, and developing the AI and generative AI modules. Uh, in our bank, for example, uh, just to give you a little idea, uh, we have, uh, you know, uh, because we are uh, currently doing almost four uh, crore customer transactions every day uh, on a base of about uh, uh, 90 million customers or 9 crore customers. And uh, we are now uh, looking at, uh, you know, uh, SNA alerts, which is the SAS AML guided, uh, you know, alerts, which is on T plus one basis. But uh, we are now looking at expanding it to RTTM, which is real time transaction monitoring, which is again a tool which is uh, coming into play, which is being, being developed. Uh, to uh, assess the risk in terms of transactions, uh, transactions such as, you know, just to give you an example, uh, let's say for example, uh, an amount is dormant, uh, you know, uh, for the last six months to one year, is uh, transacting nothing, and suddenly he starts transacting very high volume transactions or very big transactions. So that throws up, uh, you know, signals or that throws up, uh, uh, you know, risk uh, this thing. So then uh, the decision of uh, the, uh, the uh, you know, uh, AML team or the risk monitoring team is to whether uh, stop the transaction, delay the transaction or uh, uh, or allow the transaction. So those kind of uh, this thing. And even today, uh, 
Uh, for example, uh, most of you have seen that uh, you know, in case you are transacting a big amount, uh, you immediately receive a call from the call center. Maybe an IBR call, uh, uh, trying to cross check whether this is trans this transaction has been really done by you or not. Right? We all receive that call or not? You all receive that. So uh, these are the kind of real time transaction monitoring. So, for example, one person is making a transaction to say 50 accounts in a span of say 50 uh, one hour. So uh, it throws up an alert and immediately the transaction has to be uh, monitored and uh, action has to be taken. And similarly, there are so many cyber crime, uh, you know, uh, portal reports. There are unauthorized debit, uh, uh, you know, customer uh, complaints which come in. So immediately we uh, try and put a freeze. And RBI and along with the NPCI, they are also now trying to develop uh, techniques whereby, uh, in case of such complaints. Um, you know, for example, a customer, he has defrauded a customer, say, uh, by an amount of, say, 5 lakh rupees and he has transferred it to 5 different accounts. So, in case before he withdraws money from those 5 different accounts, if a freeze is put on those 5 accounts, uh, still some money can be saved. You know, but in case the time goes by and he gets the opportunity to, you know, uh, transfer it again and again and again, Accounts and uh, you know he withdraws the money in cash and he's gone. Uh, so uh, so by the time in case the it's a, it's a question of time only. You know how quickly how fast you react and how fast the freeze can be put. So uh, you know in terms of the manual processes uh, which are currently in, uh, in play and which are being done by uh, you know today uh, even if let's say a cyber crime portal he gets uh, a call and uh, he uh, asks the primary bank from where the bank uh, amount has been withdrawn and from there the moment they get the, uh, the uh, account details of uh, the accounts where the uh, money has moved out immediately the freeze can be put by the cyber crime portal. So therefore, therefore uh, the things are moving at a faster pace people, uh, the, the law enforcement agencies or the banks and the uh, organization they are also learning and they are also trying to, uh, you know, as I said, it's a cat and mouse game and, uh, you know, as the crime and the risk and the things go on, uh, you know, things also, uh, the, the uh, organizations or the lenders and all, uh, they also move ahead. So, coming back to now, uh, uh, again, uh, the questions. Uh, so, coming back to people, so digitalization of KYC and uh, credit decision automation helps in reducing risk of fraud substantially. So, how do you think that pre and post disbursement at both levels uh, the digitalization helps in uh, preventing fraud? Good question. Uh, uh, I think uh, you started from where like, I had ended my last question, right? So, I said, uh, while well, uh, digitalization has helped us to uh, get the benefits by reducing debt and also customer experience, but the number of frauds they are increasing. So uh, the number of frauds uh, when it comes to the latest report which we just uh, published last week uh, for the uh, annual year complete 2024, uh, it mentions uh, the number of frauds have increased from around 9,022 to around 36,024, right? Uh, but if you see on the category, the amount involved for the frauds that has reduced substantially from 45,000 crores to it's around 13,000 crores, right? And uh, if you uh, uh, slightly, uh, slightly dice this, uh, it is slightly further down, then you find that around 84% of that amount involved, right? That is related to loans, that is advances, right? 84% is around advances and another 11% is related to credit cards and internet banking related frauds. So uh, the role of technology as, as uh, my family mentioned uh, that AI ML in terms of evaluating the uh, KYC documents and other way like my claim uh, mentioned, imagine that you have to do that OED kind of stuff. So OED is finally what? It's just a piece of paper, right? And you are depending on the person who has done KYC, right? So the person has actually checked the document, he has certified, yes, I have seen the original as per RBA's guideline that he has to certify it on a piece of paper. And I have seen the original, I have I have checked it, everything is telling, this is how the device used to happen. But now how it's happening is 
uh, the radius cells, you have face-to-face -face modes, you have non face to face modes. So you use CKYC, where you just ask CKYC identifier from the customer, or in, in, in place of CKYC identifier, you can have PAN number, date of birth, that also acts as some kind of combination, you are able to fetch CKYC details. Uh, now, it's very easy, right? So PAN number, you know, like it's, it's not very difficult for people to uh, uh, find out. Let's say fraudsters, they'll always find out a lot of data with reference to PAN cards, right? So how difficult it is now if they have access to that PAN number and date of birth. So it's very easy to fetch CKYC, right? But if it is happening more face-to-face, -face, then as I said that we have to do some kind of letter, right? You have to send this letter to him, or you have to do some contact point verification. So it's very essential, right? Because when, when I initially looked at that guidelines of RBI, that if you have to use CKYC, then this is essential, is that aspect. Because what we have seen in India, while people are grasping digitization with both hands, right? But they are not very much wary about the physical KYC documents, right? It's freely available. You would have seen on the dark website a lot of data of all of us might be available, right? Uh, so there is a link if you want to see, you can see uh, MI spoof. If you put an MI spoof, it will ask your email ID. You mentioned it would mention that your email ID has been shared with various people on various occasions because your data with Jomato, with Swiggy, with different other organizations which we don't care much, right? Every one of us uses, let's say, one time was there, we used you as internet cafes, right? You left a lot of data. I'm telling you, so you are not even aware of the kind of data you have left. You simply leave your name, mobile number with uh, almost every restaurant where you do some sort of booking, right? You, you, you love those, right? But everywhere you are leaving your digital footprints, believe me, these are catchy, right? So these are some areas where fraudsters catch hold of the data. Once they have your AI information available, they have your name, they have your date of birth, they have your band number, they have your address, they have your mobile number, they have your email ID. Just see how difficult it is for those people now to uh, showcase themselves as you and approach various banks, fintechs, claiming that they are the same person whose documents they are carrying. So that becomes very difficult. But now, I uh, mean, the government is also trying to uh, keep pace with that, right? So now, one of the guidelines which I had mean, uh, mentioned that your Aadhaar and they have to be linked. I think last week was 31st of May, right? Then uh, you are using the mobile number which is associated with your Aadhaar that has to be the same number which you are using it for your bank accounts, right? So this, this is another way of catching all of this. Now, uh, for every video KYC, again, uh, the Aadhaar validation or the CKYC validation that is must followed by uh, showing your original PAN card. Again, uh, the challenge which uh, Maji was mentioning that many of us may not carry this uh, original. Right? So original would be with the real person only, right? The who is the owner of that pair, right? So photocopy anyone can get. So these are the kind of, I think, uh, areas where technology per se has helped us to uh, take care of frauds. Uh, this is, let's say, before a disbursement. Now, after disbursement, again, technology helps us in many ways, right? So currently, uh, we almost all the banks they have data about uh, the customers transactions right so uh, one of the mode which uh, was enabled recently uh, in uh, maybe the last one one to two years is account aggregator module where you give access to your statement during uh, loan taking and it does have some kind of time frame within which that statement bank can continue to see your regular updated statements they can also see during the loan journey let's say you have taken the loan for four years so that account aggregator, if you're given consent, that this consent is valid for next four years. So they are able to see your real-time data, right? They are able to see your transaction pattern. They are able to see how this particular account is performing, right? And so many other tools have come these days, like where uh, your social indicators, right? So your social media handles, being LinkedIn, Facebook, X, right? Instagram. So so so. So many technologies have come that we are able to spot the behaviors of the customers, social patterns, right? And all these things help. 
to tell the customer, to tell the bank, yeah, something is going right or something is going wrong, right? So based upon those signals, these signals are treated as only warning signals. Bank develop their strategies, right, and try to curtail the frauds. This is how it happens currently. Thank you, Deepak. And uh, just as you mentioned the amount ag aggregator, uh, I would also like to mention regarding the OKEN framework, which is Open Credit Enablement Network. Uh, which is uh, basically democratizing the uh, credit, uh, you know, disbursal or, or the loan, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking uh, uh, options for the customers. Uh, so basically this, uh, uh, what happens is that there are through the account aggregators, there are uh, basically two kinds of players, which is FIPs, which are financial information providers, and FIUs, which are the financial information users, which are the banks. So in this case, let's say a person wants a loan at the loan service provider or LSP uh, platform. Uh, when he goes there, he gives a consent. Let's say he's got a uh, bank account in, uh, say, uh, four different accounts, uh, four different banks. So he will give a consent to uh, share the account statement of bank X, Y, Z, A, B, C, right? And that information in encrypted form, consent-based, goes to the financial information users. Similarly, uh, the uh, mutual fund statements, his insurance statements, you know, all those kind of things uh, uh, he can share, uh, consent based, uh, which helps, uh, or for example, if he's a merchant, he can uh, share the GSC uh, details, he can share the GSC number, and uh, he uh, allows that information to be shared with the lenders. And basis that, let's say, if I use, I'd say there are, it's, a, it's an open architecture, as I said. So there are five lenders who are willing to give uh, him loan based on his geotagging or his location or the size or the kind of loan that he's asking. So, and the, uh, based on the BRE one, or let's say BRE uh, business rule engine one, he, uh, say five lenders come ahead, they all offer, say, a, a, a credit, uh, you know, offering. Let's say I give you a loan for five years of this much amount, let's say one gives a 10 lakhs loan for 10%, the other guy is give, uh, gives a 15 lakh loan for uh, say uh, at uh, 12%. So uh, those kind of offers and then the customer has the option to evaluate and uh, uh, then he, uh, uh, you know, he can take the loan from any of the lending options. So, so this basically under the open credit enablement network, that is the open network framework, uh, the, uh, the new uh, credit, uh, you know, uh, industry is going to expand, and the way uh, uh, you know uh, many of the players are already onboarded, and there are many uh, fintech players which are uh, uh, operating as account aggregators. There are many lending institutions or uh, distribution uh, players which are uh, coming as uh, loan service providers. So uh, this is going to be the future of uh, the uh, credit in the in the times to come. Uh, just to give you an idea uh, the, kind of, the kind of digital lending uh, which has happened, uh, for example, on um, Paytm. Uh, Paytm uh, was lending to the tune of around four to 5,000 crore uh, on a per month basis or per 16, 17,000 crore uh, per quarter uh, only as a, uh, you know, as a lead service provider enabling digital uh, lending. And uh, the kind of uh, loans, almost uh, around 60, 70 thousand crore of loan he was, BTM uh, uh, was doing. Grow, for example, Grow is uh, not even a lending organization. Uh, over the last few months, they have started doing credit leads and uh, you know, uh, as as uh, uh, providing a platform for the lending. They are doing about 600 crore of loans on a monthly basis. So this is the kind of uh, network is a kind of uh, ease of, for the customers and not only uh, you know the, the loan statements etc and uh, you know uh, the past uh, civil records etc there are many NTC customers who are new to credit uh, there are some surrogates on the basis of which also the, uh, uh, the lenders are willing to extend loans and willing to give loans but definitely I would say, I mean, uh, you know, uh, Mazin, you uh, have been into a uh, lot of credit, digital uh, credits and all. Uh, so you would agree that, you know, uh, even the credit, uh, you know, sometimes the lenders, they feel that they need to have some physical network to back it. You know, just in case, uh, you know, we uh, always would uh, uh, 
uh, track the geolocation where the uh, creator and or the borrower is and uh, whether he is accessible and whether in case required uh, he can be followed up and uh, uh, the, because uh, ultimately again um, uh, the repayment of the loan is uh, most important, the first thing that the uh, borrower always thinks about. So, uh, uh, just as, as one last question to Mazin. So, uh, 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 regarding the compliance, you know, again, uh, uh, while we are lending, uh, we are all working, we are all regulated entities, armies, as we say. Uh, how, uh, you know, the digitization, you know, for the A KYC or the AML, etc., and uh, the uh, uh, the automation helps in meeting the regulatory compliance requirements. I think I'm only five minutes, right? And I'll focus on uh, the anti money laundering part. Yeah, I'll give an example, right? There was a very common uh, money laundering uh, which was happening by the e commerce firm, right? And, and what was happening is, and there were pockets uh, in India where this was happening is, a lot of people will order high value items on cash or delivery, right? So you will deliver it. Uh, let's say they order a TV of 80,000 uh, cash on delivery. You, uh, the consumer will pay 80,000 cash to the uh, agent, right? And then they will return the item, right? So most likely they will not open the item, they will return for whatever reason. Right? Now when you return, right, the money will come into your bank account, right? So they are converting cash to uh, funds in bank accounts, converting black money to white money using uh, e-commerce, right? And, and this was happening as a significantly large scale, right? And I think it was primarily because of uh, money, uh, you know, uh, because of the AI and the ML tools that this anti-money, this money laundering would be detected, right? So I think what uh, digitization, uh, artificial intelligence, advanced analytics is able to do is, now you are able to look large and large amount of data. You are able to also look at unstructured data, unrelated data, analyze them very fast and you know come to a conclusion uh, as to where is it that there is a compliance breach, where is it that, that there are instances of fraud and anything. You gave, already gave some examples around this, right? Uh, where in the moment you make a very high value transaction, right? You will most likely, uh, or you do a transaction to a location which is a high risk, right? Uh, or you do a, uh, or you do multiple transactions, right? Uh, high frequency transactions, etc. Most likely you get a call from your bank saying, "I you done this transaction? If not, should we stop those transactions?" Right? So I think uh, so. So so the beauty here is uh, one is you can look at large amount of data, you can look at unstructured, unrelated, related data. Two, you can act very fast, right? I mean, uh, today if you do a transaction, let's say to a in a location where you are normally not present, right? Let's say X location in India, right? You live in India, let's say you have made a credit to a person, let's say, who lives in Rajasthan or UP, right? Uh, nothing unusual, just that usually you do all your UPI transactions in Bombay. And suddenly you have done one transaction uh, in Rajasthan, right? So I think most likely in seconds or maybe a minute you receive a call saying, you know, uh, is this your transaction, etc. Right? So I think that is the beauty uh, of uh, the advanced analytics tools that we have today. Uh, you can look at large amount of data and you know identify patterns uh, and act on them very quickly and prevent fraud. Right? So I think as we use, uh, so we use analytics not just to onboard the customer fast also, so not just to increase the business of sales fast, but to also control the risk and compliance also very fast. And I think that's a 360 degree solution that some of these analytics and digitization is able to offer us. Uh, thank you very much and uh, thanks all the panel members. Uh, in fact, uh, it has been an interesting discussion around uh, digitization, speed, efficiency and uh, uh, cost effectiveness, scale, size, risk, uh, factors, compliance uh, and uh, anti-Q frameworks that are coming in, generative AI, etc. So thank you very much and I hope the audience uh, has gained from the, uh, the discussion. and. Uh, would you like to ask, uh, take any questions if you want? Any, any Possibly questions? Possibly just uh, one or something. One or two questions we can take in case the audience wants to ask. Just conclusively, I think it was a fabulous panel discussion. Hence, yeah, sure. we have one. Okay. Just take one. Now, uh, now we are on deep fake. Yeah. So, considering can you have a mic for the gentleman?
I also request you to uh, introduce yourself from here and then go ahead with the question. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, no, sir. Myself, Pramod Dada. I am a director of Indraini Cooperative Bank from Pune. My question towards you that when we are talking about the digitization, uh, in perspective of the bankers, what commercial opportunities you think for the uh, cooperative banker side especially? Very simple and straight question. The commercial aspect to the banker. So how the banker, you know, uh, effectively gains from uh, the digitalization? So, Pavod, uh, are you wanting to ask that how digitalization is helping banks for commercial benefits or something different? Yes. Let us just be a very clear. The reason behind that, RBI and the regulatory is insisting us to deploy the KYC and all this stuff. So, we are increasing our cost in one side. So, ultimately, we cannot ask any uh, revenue generation from the customer side. So, uh, uh, can you suggest any uh, light on for the corporate bank especially, that how to mitigate that uh, extra cost burden on the bank side. I understand that. So, uh, so this 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 has the same uh, significance which Mr. Bansal you said that uh, instead of spending around six hundred rupees for uh, doing KYC for opening of a savings account, now you're spending around three rupees, right? So I mean, like, uh, this is this is uh, one of the dilemma for many banks, uh, which I uh, want to say. While you invest in technology, it is it is an expense, right? It sits in a box in the same year when you are incurring that expense, and the benefits you are going to reap over a period of time, right? So it helps you in numerous ways, right? As Mr. Uh, Bansal so uh, rightly mentioned, first expense has already happened when you have made your KYC processes digitalized. You set up a team who is doing video KYC. You set up the infra. You 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 ensure that information, everything you are doing digital, everything is secure. So expenses are done, right? Now they are just recurring expenses for your people who are doing video KYC or the technology AMCs and other things, right? But just now look at the same thing. You have now let's say 15 people, I just quoted an example, 15 people. Now they are just doing video KYC for you. So people on the country salesperson, if he has to do now a uh, video KYC key placement in place of video KYC, he has to do a manual physical KYC in Pune. You will go from Deccan Jankana to uh, Hapsad, right? So I think it will take one hour, one side, Anajana is two hours, right? You look at now two hours of competition time of that salesperson which is just spending for doing a KYC. On the contrary, this video KYC it happens in less than five minutes, sitting from the comfort of customer's home, your home, right? So what will happen is it will have some gestation period within which your course would be amortized and you'll be able to reap the benefits, right? Once the scale comes, right? Once over a period of time when the scale comes, you'll be able to reap far richer benefits. This is this is the example you would have seen in all the newspapers. All uh, companies like the, the like of Jomato, Swiggy, they are burning money initially just to grab more customers. Once the customers become habitual of using their platform, they start making money. Right? I think this is all uh, one answer. Hope I answer your question. Well, I would like to add on to what Mr. Uh, what my colleague has mentioned. So you are talking about the cooperative bank, right? Yes. Okay. So you have got license from RBI. Okay. Uh, let me frame my question this way. What if your license has been gone? Or I pay cancels it tomorrow? What is more important? License is more important. Right? Okay. That is precisely my answer to the question would be. Your license is important because uh, that is the very basic existence of yours. And you have to exist within the pyramid of the regulations defined by RBI or for that matter SEBI or uh, whatever other NHB uh, sort of world basically right if the digitization is a need of us no regulation specifies to what extent that you have to go to digitization that is as per the risk perception or the capacity of the organization but that needs to be done like an example which has been just cited by one of my colleagues right uh, using e-commerce the black money was converting into white okay that was a, I mean, that was not a, a, a grave, I mean, that was an uh, intense example, but what if your bank or cooperative bank is getting used for terrorist financing, yeah? And what if uh, my 
multiple accounts have been opened up using different OVDs which you are not, as a bank you are not able to identify. What if if you go wrong onto these KYC norms? Threat on your license, basic license. Come on, everyone. Thank you. 